Okay. We're back. We're having a very heavy uh, precipitation, uh, uh, in layman's terms, uh, rain, a rainstorm. So if you hear that racket, pitter patter, the pitter patter of raindrops on the roof, you'll know what that is. Welcome everyone to uh, to progressive discussions, and um, I just want to start off by uh, saying um, that uh, I, I watch some YouTube videos that I haven't seen uh, before. Uh, is there a gentleman by the name of uh, Snow on the Fox News? Snow. Last name Snow. I could be wrong. I remember a Tony Snow. Well, it, not it, from Fox. Not that from I Fox. Know. Um, well, Mark Cuban, the billionaire Mark Cuban was on there, and the subject was about H-1B visas uh, taking away many, many, many American jobs. And he was um, justifying it by saying that companies uh, are out, in, out to seek the very finest professionals for their companies to hire, and the other gentleman was saying... Uh, no, it's about companies wanting cheaper labor. And a Cuban who claims is not a conservative or a liberal, uh, he's not, he's an independent, but, you know, by him insisting that companies import H-1B visa people, it is because they want to hire the very best. And uh, the very best will make for a better company, a more prosperous company, Blah 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 yada yada yada. Okay, all There's right. There's another Cuban. type of visa too that they that they count on. Exploit. I don't know. I didn't get the uh, number or designation, whatever it is. But there's another one which they use quite frequently. Yeah. Well, all I know is you can't fool me. You can't fool a slick, streetwise person. I know these American mm -hmm. companies are doing it to get cheap labor. Uh, they could say anything they want. All these famous multi-billionaires that are in uh, the spotlight of uh, celebrity status, they can say whatever they want. But uh, that's pretty much what uh, they, they all do. He was even defending Microsoft and Facebook saying, oh no, they pay top dollar. They uh, want to pay top dollar for the best uh, uh, employees that they can hire. And they Marks don't need H-1Bs. Bees. Yeah. In other if words, they're going to pay top dollar. In other words, they can't. If they were willing, if they pay top, if they're willing to pay top dollar for their uh, professional uh, jobs that they have, they would. Upper management, they would hire experienced American workers with, with a great resume and pay top dollar. They would. Or they would buy, hire the H-1Bs and pay top dollar. They don't. <laughs> That's the point. You know, uh, 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 it's a trend. I'm not, I'm not singling out one corporation, but, you know, Mark Cuban is, par is partially full of crap, man, full of shit. Yeah. He's, you know, uh, uh, hey, no matter how generous or compassionate a rich man or rich woman may appear, if you dig deep down and you interview them long enough, the truth usually comes out. And it's all for them. And, and it all has to do with the, their bottom line. Yeah. Just like the commercial, I, the, where, the, where the woman says, and that helps my bottom line. My bottom line, my bottom line, my you know, anybody who owns a business. Now, hmm. I was uh, at all the Aldi's market, which is a German company, uh, main office is, is in Illinois. There's an Aldi's market in my town. And I stopped by to get the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, uh, his, some soup that he wanted. Bean and bacon? Yeah. Or yes. bacon and bean. Bean, bean and, and bacon. bacon. Bean with bacon. Okay. Bean with bacon. All right. Now, um, I had forgot all week, 
because I was at all these a few times this week and it slipped my mind because I have a lot of things on my plate. Uh, one of which is an injured uh, right elbow from working out. It very rarely happens to me, but it happens. It goes mm -hmm. with the territory. Anybody who does intense, uh, high intensity uh, exercises, it's, it's like a, a contact sports athlete. It goes with the territory. And yes, my voice sounds like the man from Men's Warehouse. I have a raspy voice because of the weather. So I'll please forgive me. I apologize. This is not my real voice. <laughs> but anyway, I stopped by. I got the soup. So somebody, the, the cashier, uh, uh, she was always very nice to me. Uh, older Dominican girl, Hispanic girl, <coughs> overhears me mentioning, overheard me mentioning that my wife uh, basically used and deceived me for a green card and, and then she left. So her answer was she looked, well she looked and then looked down and she had a smile on her face and she says, hey, we have to do what we have, have to, to do. do. <laughs> so I says, yeah, at other people's expense. <laughs> she didn't answer me. So that whole politically correct neoliberal concept <clears throat> that there cannot be any reverse discrimination against Caucasians is a bunk is bunk because bunk. that kind of debunked it because of that is someone who is a predatory, a person from a third world country of color, being predatory towards Caucasian American men and not caring, not feeling any remorse for what they do and the uh, emotional damage that's done and possibly financial damage, blood, sweat, tears and time put into it. The immigration system is not like it used to be. You have to fight like hell to prove mm -hmm. that your uh, immigrant wife or husband should remain in the United States with you even though you marry them. Unless that, you're a terrorist, then we let right. you in. Well, well, I was going to say, ever since 9-11, the G.W. Bush with his, uh, his um, um, uh, organization, um, Homeland Security, uh -huh. excuse me sir, I'm sorry, Homeland Security changed everything. Yeah. Made it very difficult. Uh, there was the stupidest thing that they require, and, and believe me, nobody nobody really does this anymore except old geezers and, and old, yeah. old bags. They want to see a, a large, thick photo album. Now, who the hell keeps photo albums nowadays with all the photos being digitally stored on hard drives and and, and in laptops and and and, and uh, um, uh, tablets and such and phones and iPhones and everything, Androids. All they do is if they want if they need photos, they just take their iPhone and they just you know go to a Walgreens and 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 uh, 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 download that or upload upload the the photos and they can get them printed if they have to. But to keep a photo album, well, we all know that the state and federal government does not keep up with the times with technology unless you're the military. The military, I think, uh, is the only department that keeps up with technology and then some. But um, I just want to salute this organization. Finally, I found an organization very local that shares my interests and um, there's, a, there's a website called meetup.com where people that have like interests, like interests, hobbies, whatever, uh, have fellowship. They, they Sometimes they get together for events and they also promote many events of different kinds many different kinds on meetup.com. Well, this one I joined is called Resist and Regenerate out of Elmwood Park, New Jersey. It is a grassroots revolution uh, 
environmental, organic food, holistic health organization. And it's very local. It's only like uh, five or ten minutes drive, Elmwood Park. It's, you know, it's, it's very close to where I live. And I joined it. And, um, of course, I said that I will mention the group um, on this week's Progressive Discussion. So I salute Resist and Regenerate Elmwood Park, New Jersey. Okay, I dedicate the show to you and hopefully uh, it will be to my advantage to belong to it. And, and I will meet um, people with like-minded interests, make new friends. Mm -hmm. um, uh, along, going along the same line as what Resist and Regenerate is about, I've discussed this with Reverend Bill in the past. I have ideas that will help, but they will only help if we get the money out of politics. All right. As long as, like Bernie Sanders says, it's extremely important. Nothing gets done unless you get the money out of politics. Now, to, to the people that belong to Resist and Regenerate, I highly, I highly recommend you uh, uh, join the, uh, the organization um, Our Revolution. They have a website. And, and as Bernie Sanders has a book called, called Our Revolution. And I plugged the book on the last time. Was it last week or the week mm -hmm. before? Something like that. Recently, I plugged this book and I showed it. Now, uh, you got to get the money out of politics. Now, my idea is <clears throat> we cannot, we have to stop penalizing so called homeowners in America from collecting rainwater, uh, having vegetable and herbal gardens in their front yard as well as their backyard you, so, you so, if solar you, power if you have a backyard victory garden and you decide to use your front yard as a garden also you are fine heavily chickens uh, be able to raise chickens for eggs uh, um, and um, and be allowed to have a high stockade fence to keep your privacy keep everything contained um, even though chickens really never leave once they get, once they, you start feeding them, you know. But the point is, not be penalized for raising your own food, mm. growing your own food. Another thing, I've been to state parks, I've been to county parks, um, I've been to many parks. I've, I've driven by many schoolyards, both grammar school and high school. There, there is quite a bit of wasted land in all these locations. I think that uh, many fruit trees can be planted in schoolyards and state and county parks so low-income people and the homeless can go and gather fruit. Also, urban gardening, small-scale urban gardening should be a course in, in grammar school and high school where you split the, the students up, like two or three in a team, and you give them the assignment of growing one item of produce, and you use the schoolyard for the victory garden. I think growing food is extremely important to learn that they just don't teach in American schools. Uh, organic, urban gardening, it can be done, it has been done, it's done in cities, whether it be in, in very large pots, flower pots, or, or, or flower beds on the roofs of, of, of apartment buildings and skyscrapers. Um, it, a lot could be done with a limited amount of space. I do it, I do it, urban gardening. Uh, I have I buy five gallon um, trash cans and buckets, plastic uh, from the do a dollar store locally, the Dollar Tree. 
I burn holes in the bottom. I buy uh, eight pound bags of good potting soil from the dollar store. Mm -hmm. And I have grown peppers, tomatoes, herbs, vegetables. I've done it successfully. A lot could be done with limited space. You can have a, a small scale organic urban garden and most importantly I think it should be a course in school and I think a lot of this wasted land that is just there for the landscapers to come and cut the grass should actually fake be... Fake grass. Huh? Fake grass. Probably genetically... Fake or sometimes no grass, no nothing but cedar chips or whatever the hell they put on yeah, the ground. It's wasted land. Wasted land. Well, yeah. Plant, plant some apple trees. Some mulberry hey, Johnny trees. Johnny Appleseed. Some pears. I love pears. Is it true that a uh, pear tree only grows two two pieces of fruit at a time? That's why they call it a pear? No. No, no, I'm only no, kidding. no. That was a stupid corny joke. I'm only kidding. Oh. Now, um, yeah, growing food is pretty damn important, I oh, think. Yeah. And I think it should be part of the school curriculum. Hey, even Bergen County Community College has is on a huge amount of property. It's almost as, looks like it could be a golf course. Uh, 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 you know, a, um, mm. a half a golf course is so much. And, you know, it's landscaped with grass. Well, you know what? Organic farming, organic farming can be at community colleges too. Growing food is important. They don't teach it. They don't do it. Mm. But getting back to the foundation is you got to get the money out of politics because otherwise none of this stuff, including green alternative energy, none of it will happen because mm. of political corruption. Now, there mm. is a wind generator that's out today, one Uno windmill that can power one home. Oh, no. Not even counting solar panels can power a home. Okay. Um, it's out there. Okay. Um, let me see. There's an article here I want to talk about. Um, it's an article about vitamin D. And it comes from Horizon of New Jersey Health. Um... Getting enough vitamin D. Vitamin D is important for strong and healthy bones. It also helps your body fight infection and benefits your overall health. Your body makes its own vitamin D from sunlight and turns it into calcium. Mm. Well, from what I understand, um, phosphorus is very important mm -hmm. for the conversion uh, for vitamin D to help the body absorb calcium. The vitamin D is not itself, is not turned into calcium. No. They're wrong. The calcium has to be present. And minerals come from the ground. Mm -hmm. The body doesn't just make minerals out of thin air. No. All right. <clears throat> so therefore, if it's not in the ground, it's not in the vegetables. Sometimes your body may not get enough vitamin D which results in a condition known as vitamin D deficiency. Duh! What about rickets? Boy, they're really, they're sharp quirkies. Huh? Oh, yeah, hey. I gotta add to them, to, to this article, to educate people. People with vitamin D deficiency may feel tired or have aches and pains. Well, it affects the immune system a great deal. Some people may not have any symptoms. It is more common to be vitamin D deficient during the winter months. Well, because you're not getting that much sun. Mm -hmm. Well, today's kids are should be deficient all year round because they don't go outside and play like I did. Mm -hmm. They're 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 playing video games indoors mm -hmm. and they're they're busy being online. Okay, when when you are not spending as much time outside getting sunlight, research has shown that people who have had low levels of vitamin D in their blood are at a higher risk for developing 
type 2 diabetes later in life. Mm -hmm. That is why it is especially important for young people to get enough vitamin D. If you think you may be vitamin D deficient, talk to your doctor. Ah. Oh yeah, you want to talk to a drug pushing big pharma allopathic doctor about vitamin D and they'll give you a prescription for some overpriced vitamin D3 which you can easily get over the counter. Okay, nice job Horizon. Yes, yeah, so well, he or she can perform a blood test to check the amount of vitamin D in your blood. Hmm. This article is boring me already because it's not complete. It's not comprehensive. Ways you can get vitamin D. Exposing your skin to sunlight. Yeah, in moderation. Certain foods, beef liver, cheese, egg yolks, fatty fish such as tuna and salmon. Taking vitamin D supplements. Talk to your doctor for your correct dosage. Mm. You know, I do have to admit, medical doctors have gotten better because my sister, uh, Lisa, had a vitamin D deficiency and her medical doctor put her on 5,000 international units of D3. Mm -hmm. Now, I, at one time, 5,000 units would, would have been scoffed at by a medical doctor. They would have been told, so do my toxic. You're going to die. You're going to die of toxicity. Same thing with vitamin A. Yeah. When in reality, you could safely take between 10,000 and 25,000 international units of vitamin A. And when you have an illness, you can probably get away with more than that. Mm -hmm. Well, I always have to add some real truth to many articles from officialdom. Um, so, uh, seven lucky bells for this week's show. I forgot to do that. Everything we discuss politically is part of our series Crapitalism in a Conch Shell. <laughs> I mean that my, I can't lift my right shoulder. Uh -uh. I gotta use my left hand. Soak in that conch energy. Uh -uh. Oh, King Neptune. You want me to mention William Morrow? Yeah, I know. I know. I had the fight of all fights with him. Oh, Lord. This time he really is persona non grata, yeah. Okay, all right, I'll talk to you. All oh, right, boy. William Morrow is one of those guys because, see, his father was a big shot, high, he had a high executive position with IBM. So he, he was a, a spoiled and coddled child, but now he is retired uh, from doing commercial voiceovers that he used to do with us. But he's living on a fixed income, and uh, you know, he's uh, struggling to get by, you know, make ends meet, pay the bills. But for some reason, he is, well, it's probably because of his, his father's brainwashing, he is pro-corporate and pro-right-wing Republican. And uh, even though he's on a fixed income, he bashes unions, not realizing that, and bashes, uh, you know, uh, a liberal, uh, liberalism, progressive, uh, left-wing people. Not realizing that if it wasn't for those left-wing people, he would not have the uh, safety net of um, the fixed income that he depends on today. And all these social services that people, low-income people, and that William Morrow uh, uh, depends on. Okay. If it wasn't for the left wing, mm -hmm. if it wasn't for progressive liberals, you would have no um, unions. They started the whole concept of uh, labor laws, you know, and, and, and fighting the demons of the Industrial Revolution. The, the J.P. Morgans, the Carnegies, all of them, the Rockefeller, uh, Vanderbilt, Cornelius, I think it was his name. So, you know, 
he has a very high IQ. He's, he's a highly intelligent man, but he shoots himself in the foot by putting down that which created what he lives on. But he's not the only person like this. You know, also, he has been very obnoxious, very nasty, very pompous, very uh, arrogant. <laughs> He tries to pick a fight with me as soon as I get there because I've told him things that he did not want to hear. I've told him the truth. I've told him reality. He believes very much in what mainstream media tells him. He thinks that the underground news, the underground media, everything that I've told him is fake news from the internet. Everything he hears on CNN is written in stone. Okay. Um, the the big fight I had with him to end all fights was I was it was something going on on CNN concerning uh, Sean Spicer ah. giving the um, Melissa McCarthy will be on uh, Saturday Night Live yeah. today imitating him. Well, Bill Morrow got angry and started yelling and saying, Sean Spicer is a great guy. He's a nice guy. He's just, he just, she, he just doesn't know what to say in defense of Donald Trump. I says, really? Really? So Spicer's a nice guy. What are you going to say next? That uh, uh, Jeff Sessions, the evangelical religious nut, is a nice guy? I says, no Republican in the Trump poll. No Republican in the Donald Trump cabinet is a nice person. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is the, a right-wing multi-billionaire is a nice person. I had a big fight with him. That was it. That's it. Good. You know, nice guy. Nice if, guy. Republican if, corporatist. If Spicer were a nice guy, he would resign. Okay. And not and not tolerate. And not defend the indefensible Donald Trump, who is who lies every time he opens his mouth. And every week that goes by is becoming more and more like a lunatic. He, he's See, becoming more like the Don that he thinks he is. He wants loyalty from his people. Loyalty. He wants them to march in lock in locks. Uh, he's taking the democracy supposedly, supposedly, quote unquote, known as the United States of America, and he's turning it into the dictatorship of Donald Trump. Right. Ego, ego. Defend him at all costs. Ego maniacal. Yeah. You can't disagree with him. He wants to he wants to make make a, a, a Donald Trump criticizing illegal. Illegal, yeah. Or if not illegal you get killed for it. Like Corleone, you know? Like well, that, so. like, no, forget about Corleone. They'll send Luca Braccio. Forget about Don against. Corleone. Let's go back to the to the Roman Catholic Church of the Middle Ages. Talk about a right-wing dictatorship. Well, of course. You, you were, if you disagree, if you were a, a man of science and you disagreed with the Roman Catholic Church back then, they burned you to the stake. What was the crime? Heresy? Heresy. Because you disagreed with the Pope. Because the Pope was inerrant. He could not be in error because he was the vicar of Christ on earth. The vicar. They also thought earth was only, what, five or six thousand years old, right? That's more the Presbyterian garbage. Yeah, yeah. But it's, okay. all gar it's all garbage. It's all basically. garbage. Because but, uh, all they need to do is read, uh, what do we call it, 104.30, where God says he had to renew the face of the earth. He did not renew the earth itself, or make a new earth. We he had to renew the earth's surface, because the devil had destroyed it. Was that made it dark. Was that Tohu and Bohu? Tohu and Bohu. Now this is before the flood of Noah. Yeah. 
this is be way before. Way before. And is that the part, remember the part in Genesis where he actually, God actually says it was, it might have been a great mistake to, Make to create me. man? Because there is nothing but evil in his heart at all times. Well, he's right. That's right. He's That's right. True. Look at me. I got screwed over by my so-called close friends on Facebook. <laughs> I mean, for God's sakes, I, uh, you know, it's like Facebook plays office politics. They terminated my account after six years of hard work because I posted WWE pro wrestling star Charlotte Flair, the Nature Boy's daughter, uh, uh, some very provocative personal photos leaked out. I put them on my supposedly anything and everything goes group with no rules. They banned me for three days as punishment. Then they insisted I remove the photos. Now how can I remove the photos if I don't have the ability to do anything when I'm banned for three days? You can't upload, you can't comment. So my hands were tied. They says, take it off, take it off. Then they, they terminated. I lost everything. They terminate me, but they didn't. They didn't give me the ability to remove the photos, which I would have gladly done. So this uh, people from Facebook main office, one named Mary, and the other one is is was named Bruce Wayne. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, sure. I talk about fake news. Batman. Yeah, that's your real name, right? Yeah. So anyway, they turned the deaf ear to my appeal. They didn't see the reason that I couldn't remove the photos. You know, at least send somebody a warning. But how can I remove the photos if I'm banned for three days? So what happened was, long story short, my so-called friends that I made administrators of the groups, they knew what happened to me. I was nice enough to make them administrator, but they, they're blowing me off and ignoring me concerning bringing me back into the fold and making me administrator. Appointing me as administrator of groups that I created and built myself. So I was nice enough to make them administrator so they're ignoring me. So I said they try to make me a member. I says I'm sorry I can't be a member. I can't be just I can't just be a member of groups that I used to own, I created them, and I built them over six years. I cannot just be a member. I made you administrator. So the right thing to do is to make me administrator. Mm -hmm. But thank God at least I have my most important page on Facebook, Progressive Discussions, and you're going to fix that next time you're online. Probably Monday. Okay. So I just wanted to come clean. I'm not going to mention any names. Uh, others that I know on Facebook already know who these individuals are. There are two people that I've hung with, well, one of them I hung out with and did shows with, and the other one I just did shows with. Shame on you for doing that to me. That's all I have to say, okay? Moloik, Moloik in Italian. You know Moloik? That's the evil, evil eye. eye. That's the evil eye. Molloy. Okay, now. Um, let us sink our teeth into uh -oh. these readings. It happens to be the merry, merry month of May. It is um, the middle of May, right? Uh, let's see. Or, or, or is this still the beginning? Tuesday, 10, 11, 12, 13. Today's the 13th? Yep. That's it, an old uh, calendar. Oh, okay, so... All right, so the middle of May, 2017. Coming at you, brother. Just when you thought President Trump's lack of intellectual curiosity had reached its lowest ebb, <laughs> he commits a colossal verbal misstep. Colossal? Concerning former President Andrew Jackson. Well, expect him to know about American history. One can surmise Trump probably received his information in the coffee shop 
at Mar-a-Lago prior to tea time <laughs> when I was one of the fellow club members. You mean high tea? No, not tea. T-E-E. -E, tea off. Time. Oh, tea off. Yeah. Well, he spends a lot of time there. Yes, he does. For a guy that criticized Barack Obama for going on vacation. That's right. Uh, Teetotaler. <laughs> Uh, from another member who actually read a book about Jackson and remarked about the similarities between Jackson and Trump. Trump took this morsel of knowledge and remarked how Jackson would have prevented the Civil War. How does he figure that? He, this, did, didn't he keep slaves? Yes, he did. They all did. Oh man, yeah, they all did. You're right. All the founding fathers kept slaves, but all men were created equal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Despite Jackson having been dead for 16 years prior to the Civil War, Trump made his pronouncement on a nationally televised interview, thus proving the adage coined by Abraham Lincoln is better to remain silent and let others think you are a fool than to open your mouth and forever remove all doubt. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty clever. Trump went on to question the necessity of the Civil War. Does the word slavery ring a bell? Hey, what did we say before? Perhaps Trump should have consulted a fifth grade reader who could have pointed it out in his history book. Whoops! I forgot. Yeah. I'm talking about a book. Something alien to Mr. Trump. I'm going to bring American Steel back into the country. Is it I'm back gonna put, I'm going to put American Steel in back in your spines. Your spines will contain American Steel. Meanwhile, it was, it was Russian Steel the whole time. Chinese. Oh, now it's Chinese steel. Okay. This is meant to be a political statement. Whether you like it or you dislike President Trump, enough is enough. As a martial artist and a defender of the innocents, I have made it my mission to fight bullying Wherever I see it. Well, he's he's definitely a bully. Sounds like Batman, doesn't he? Maybe he should get spandex uh, jumpsuit and a cape. We as adults do not like it when bullies make fun of how people look. We don't like it when bullies make fun of speech impediments or how their victims pronounce certain words. We don't like it when bullies make fun of how their victims comb their hair or wear glasses or dress. Yeah, but wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Some people are hilarious <laughs> in, you know, in how they look, how they present themselves. And mispronouncing, mispronouncing words is funny. Come on. Who's that comedian when I was a kid? Norm Crosby? They used to mispronounce uh, everything. Yeah, Norm Cross. Norm Crosby and uh, Professor uh, Irwin Corey. Irwin Corey. No, Norm Crosby used to just, he would deliberately mispronounce words. He made a living out of it. Yeah, it, it, it's funny, but you, you're not cruel about it. No. But it is funny when somebody, somebody is like that. Or, you know, it looks like a freak. But you don't, you don't pick on them. You don't harass them, is what I'm saying. Mm. Why then? Do we as adults accept and laugh at supposed jokes made by late night comedians with bullying behaviors and speech about the president? If we don't like his policies, that's fair game. They can make fun and criticize them. Why are we saying no to bullying and then accepting it from TV personalities? What examples are we presenting to our kids? You keep, you keep, you keep your personal feelings out of it. Well, I don't know. I mean, this thing with Kimmel and his child with a heart condition and Trump getting rid of, uh, you know, uh, 
Obamacare and Medicaid that helps helped Kimball's Kimball's kids. Jimmy Kimball's child Jimmy kids has child. a heart condition. I didn't know yeah. that. Oh yeah, it's cost uh, a lot of money thus far. Wow, thus far. So you know, I mean, I, I, I that's fair criticism. Give me a break. All they want to do is get eight hundred billion dollars in tax cuts for the big rich people and cut it from uh, Medicaid and uh, uh, Obamacare. They, That's what they're doing. The, the right wing has have always had a, a uh, has always waged war on the poor. Well, always. because it's, it's as they say, if you let these people, people on Medicare and the poor and everything, if you let them have their way, they will just take and take and take and take and take. Yeah, the, the poor people are such moochers, but 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 they they forget the biggest moochers right. are the rich, the corporations who get free welfare, free corporate welfare, millions if not billions, billions a year in taxpayers' money that they don't have to pay back. And what about the the Republican Congress themselves? They're big moochers, and the yeah. military. Come on, the military. Uh, um, I mean, come on! They 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 work less than part-time hours. Oh, yeah. They get one hundred and seventy-five thousand a year, not counting perks. Yeah, but they're not moochers. No, of course not. <clears throat> you know, I mean, I they feel that uh, that health care and education are are not rights. No, that, you know, if you if you don't have money and you get sick, you drop dead if if you're poor. That's right. But That's they're right. but they're also hypocrites. They care a lot about the baby once it's inside the womb. So if you're if you're a baby, stay inside your mom's womb. Don't be born. Yeah. Because once you're born, you're a moocher. They don't care about you. Right. Yeah, because that that's only to uh, that's only to uh, expound their religious views. Which that's all that which, is. Which has, has no, nothing to do with the child, actually. Which has no basis of truth whatsoever. No exactly. Fa no facts to prove their their cult. Exactly. They claim to be Christians, but it has nothing to do with the God of the Bible. No. President Trump's supporters seem troubled by the criticism and a dissection of Trump and his big, bold dreams. Yeah. Dreams. For who? They bristle when Hillary Clinton speaks. They are perplexed when throngs of people show up to protest Trump's agenda. Get over it, they say. Move on. I just thought of something real funny. I'll, I'll wait till you finish. Trump supporters assert that his critics are living in a fog. Yet Trump is one of the few people in the world who was surprised to find oh, that health care is a complicated issue. Of course it's a complicated issue. It wouldn't be nearly as complicated if we had the uh, single-payer single, single payer universal plan. He basically said that the other day with uh, Trudeau from uh, uh, Can uh, uh, Canada. He, he said that they had a, a, a very good uh, medical uh, Set up. And so does Northern Europe, you know, and so does Northern Northern Europe, and probably even Japan. Most of the industrial, uh, you know, like Bernie Sanders says, yes, most that, of I mean, probably every one of them. We're the only ones, the richest nation in the world, that doesn't have, That's doesn't right. guarantee health care for all and education for all. Right. Trump's critics are not all knee-jerk reactionaries who oppose any Trump proposals without reason. Rather, they are critical because there is often no clear and convincing explanation of why this president's actions should be supported. For example, what benefit derives from revoking a rule preventing dumping toxic mine waste into streams and rivers? Uh, pollute our waters again like they used to, you know, poison our people, you know, it's all for profit, right? How does that make America great again? 
I'm still waiting for anybody to explain this. It makes their bank accounts great if you happen to That's be the top it. top one percent. Then there are dozens more proposals, executive orders and issues, that give rise to serious concerns and questions about what impact they may have. Not all concerns can be allayed by Trump's guarantees, which have been proven worthless more than once. Despite the fact that Trump did not win a majority of the popular vote, and couldn't even scrape together a plurality, he is our president. Everybody gets that. But now he should act like it. To Trump, supporters wearies of criticism who say move on and get over it, I say you first. What I was going to say that I just, yeah. I have a, I had a real funny thought when you were halfway through that. Wouldn't it be funny, like, mm. let's say Donald Trump uh, lost his re-election, which is very possible. And and what if Donald Trump, okay, he lost his re-election, he's uh, back into the uh, civilian uh, private sector, so to speak, again, mm -hmm. and he expects to get four hundred thousand dollars or more to give a, to give a speech. He expects people to pay him a lot of money to hear Donald Trump give a speech, and actually expects that kind of money. Mm -hmm. Now you know there's a huge difference between Barack Obama speech for four hundred grand and a Donald Trump. <coughs> a huge difference. I just thought that was a funny uh, uh, concept of him expecting to get paid a lot of money for public speaking. Well, according to thus far released information right. about Donald Trump's taxes, he ain't paying any. Yeah, like, you mean like General Electric doesn't, is not known to pay any either. Right. And Bill Morrow yelled at me and insisted, where did you get that fake news garbage from? Probably do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. The, he says the, the, the uh, corporate America and America's rich pay the highest tax rate of anybody, anyone in the country, in the world. He's in the world. I says, cut not the bullshit. Norway. Cut the bullshit, Billy. Nor uh, Norway. Norway pays more. Well, I think all of Scandinavia. And they get more. I think all of Scandinavia, the rich pay their fair share in taxes and then some. Wow. He is so freaking brainwashed by what his father taught him that. Well, right now he doesn't. He doesn't see the truth. Right now, the fake news thing is from Fox and Trump. That's where this comes from. Oh, alternative facts. Oh, oh, I didn't get to see, I did not get to see it in its entirety. But have have you uh, watched the interview between Judge Jean Pirro and Donald Trump? Yes. You saw the whole thing. Yes. Yeah, I not, didn't. Not the whole thing. Yeah, she's. You know what? She's way smarter than Donald Trump. Oh yeah, definitely. And 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 even though she's. She's conservative. She she's a hot older. She's a hot looking older woman. I find her appealing. I don't agree with her, you know. But I, you know. Well, if you look at uh, what's going on in TV, you got Greta Van Susteren. Oh. Now on. Oh, she's on MSNBC. MSNBC. Yeah. What is she all about anyway? And Janine Pir Pir Pirro, and some others who you know, if you watch them more carefully, you're going to see them moving towards the liberal side you mean, because of Trump. You mean Trump is going to drive... Right. Well, yeah. he already pissed off uh, uh, some people on Fox. Yeah. And and the Republican Party. Yeah. He already ticked them off. All he's got right now is his base. Once the base starts frittering away, he'll have nobody to depend on. So, so, so he will drive many Republicans and many um, former, many right-wing 
news uh, uh, journalists, whatever, he will drive them more to the left, where they will probably end up becoming moderate re Republicans. Maybe. Moderates, maybe. But, maybe. But it is also with the change of Obamacare that he's going to be driving the do do base away. I mean mainstream Joe six pack. Yeah, exactly. Mainstream mainstream uh, 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 Joe six pack America right. is going to hate his stinking guts when they realize that they don't have any health care. That he's robbing them of health care. Yes. And and he's gonna totally uh, enrage mainstream America. If he tries to touch so, uh, him and Paul Ryan, try to touch Social Security. Yeah, he's really gonna. I mean, there's gonna be riots. You know, I mean, well, it's gonna, they, be, it's they, gonna be trouble. I don't know what it is because it's been kept secret. But they have touched Social Security in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, well, I don't they, know how though. Yeah, they 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 treat they treat anything that helps. Uh, low-income Americans as an entitlement, even though it's not an entitlement. Right. It's paid for. Right. Yeah. Right. They don't like to give you anything. They want you to be reduced to either slavery, slavery, or or death. Yeah. Yeah. Take get, your pick. Get out of my country. Remember what oh, they used to say if you were against the Vietnam War? Oh yeah, Wars? guess who told me that? Get out of here! Guess who keeps Get on, out of my country! Guess who keeps on yeah, who kept on yelling at me to why don't I move to Northern Europe? There you go. Bill Morrow! <laughs> why don't I, why don't you go? Go! Yeah, no. almost, he almost was doing William Shatner. Go! Move to Sweden! I says, I don't speak Swedish. Well, learn! Get out! I says, I got a better idea. Instead of progressives leaving the United States, which you call your country, yeah, yeah, yeah. why don't we overthrow corporatists like you? Yeah, see? exactly. Now you, now you see, you see how. Shame. Now you see how he, he, when you hit a raw nerve. Yeah. Yeah. You see well, how he is now. Hey, they did the same. They did the same thing to the people who were against slavery, Susan B. Anthony, and all the women who wanted to vote. It's the same bullshit. Every time there's some kind of policy or whatever against them. In other words, it, it, the same either you love their version of America, exactly. or leave it. It's not that. It's not a. Amer it's not an America lover to leave it. It's love their version of Christianity, America, or leave In politics. Yeah, exactly. Their agenda. Their agenda. Right. That's it. We. I've hit a low point in our democracy. That's for sure. When I saw a reporter asking House members after the health care vote whether they had read the bill, every one of them said nothing and looked like deer in the headlights. <laughs> Are you serious? Voting on a bill that affects 24 million American citizens and they couldn't take the time to even know what they were signing? They couldn't wait for the bipartisan committee to see exactly who the bill will affect. What the Senate must do upon its return is reject this almost criminal behavior and have both Democrats and Republicans sit down face to face and repair the weak points of the Affordable Care Act. Lock senators in a room and don't let them out until they fix it. This is too important to take the status quo for granted. And why, in a million years, would they put a $600 million tax break only for the top 1% of the wealthiest citizens. What does that do to with our, what does that do with health care? What does that have to do with health care? Finally, the president promised health care for all Americans during the primary season. 
This is one promise I hoped he would keep. Yeah, well, I mean, anything that's alive and breathing needs health care, for God's sakes. I mean, your, your, if your pet can get sick and you can get sick, it doesn't matter if you're an aristocrat, an elitist, a wealthy, middle class, or poor. I mean, how could you deny health care to any living thing? Well, you know, that, who was it, uh, uh, the father of the uh, senator, whatchamacallit, from Kentucky. Oh, uh, 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 Rand Paul? Rand Paul's father. R Ron Paul's son, Rand, yeah. Basically, last, he basically said, if he comes upon somebody dying on the street, he'll pass him by. Nice guy. Nice libertarian, huh? Well, that's... Nice guy. That's how they figure it. You know? Drop dead. Yeah. That's, okay. like, that's how they treat the, the poor and homeless people in India. They, you're invisible. They walk yeah. right over you. Hey, they do that in New York. That's so, true. So that means that the Paul family Rand and Ron, with all their uh, degrees on the wall, uh, have no compassion or empathy for uh, people that are not rich. They don't have any. They're 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 like sociopaths. Well, if they if, if a person lacks compassion, that is and empathy too, really. That is a sign of a sociopath. Yeah. Now empathy is when you feel somebody's pain. Like when when Slick Willie Clinton had the crocodile tear run down his face and says, I feel your pain as he as he fucked the whole welfare system with uh with Newt Gingrich yeah. Yeah. and signed away Glass Steagall, I feel your pain. <clears throat> that is that's empathy. Like an well, empathic pretend. Pretend like, empathy. Like an empathic healer. Yeah, from uh, Star Trek. No, no, they really exist in real life. She was a uh, empath, empath. Yes, they they draw your illness into them, and then they feel your symptoms, and then it dissipates from them. Yeah. Eventually. Regarding why should Obama? be saintlier than his predecessors post-presidency? Another way to look at it... Saintlier? If the Clintons, mm. while current campaigning, were able to fool working-class Americans into mm. believing they were going to be helped, why can't Barack Obama do the same? Obama saw that Bill and Hillary fooled working-class Americans into believing they were going to be helped. Bill Clinton, with Hillary as an advisor, campaigned in 1992 in part by reaching out to black voters. But President Clinton moved the Democrats back to the center-right and he did it off the backs of African-American and Latino men and women when he signed into law a tougher crime bill, welfare reform, NAFTA, and the Financial Services Modernization, Modernization Act. Why do we need welfare reform if welfare didn't do the job to begin with. Exactly. After it was totally raped and stripped. But that's the reform. By uh, by uh, Newt Gingrich and Bill Clinton. The that's reform is what to make to make it less effective. To make yeah by re defunding it. Well, how the fuck? Well, what that's do you? That's how they do it. Then, and, Republicans. And what do you do? What do you do to survive if you defund it? They never worry about that part of the issue. Well, that's what that's what the gentleman told. Uh, Mark Cuban, he says, you know, there are a lot of people that are not even counted in the unemployment percentage 
because they've given up and a lot of these people had to apply for welfare and then finally SSI just to survive. Yeah, of course. Because and then they cut that. Because and then they make it unworkable. And then American, if you are looking for a job uh, and you're fresh out of school with a student loan bill, right? Yeah. Uh, you you realize that American companies they do not want to hire entry level people. They want to hire people that are ready to sink their teeth into the job and not be trained. Well, so, yeah, so, so there goes there goes kids out Unless of school. Unless you're an intern and you do it for nothing. You do it for nothing. Yeah. 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 Like, uh, like when Kramer was working for that corporation, yeah. he donated his on Seinfeld. He donated his free time. But uh, no, no, no. They don't want to. They don't want to spend any time training you. So there goes the. Uh, there goes the the new mm -hmm. career. That you just took out a student loan over. Uh -huh, yeah. Which you're going to pay for the next 40 years. Yeah, until you're like freaking 90 years old. Yeah. The Financial Services Modernization Act, which deregulated Wall Street and Glass-Steagall. That's right. Hillary Clinton continued to favor Wall Street as a senator and as Secretary of State. The Clintons were rewarded for favoring Wall Street to the tune of $153 million in paid speeches from 2001 until Hillary Clinton started her 2016 presidential campaign. In total, the Clintons gave 729 speeches, receiving an average payday of $210,795 for each address. The Clintons also reported at least $7.7 .7 million for at least 39 speeches to the big banks. Obama may have thought, hey, this is a great approach. If I campaign as a populist with rhetoric like change we can believe in and the fierce urgency of now it will certainly bring about working-class Americans and especially African Americans to vote for me, making me the president. Oh. Then I can use my presidency wow. to bail out Wall Street, help the corporations and the big banks. Bail them out? Help the big banks? Yeah. More than they've already been helped and bailed out. Oh, that's what happened. They did. They, the, the, the uh, I forget what it was called. The seven hundred and some billion dollar bailout for all the banks and everything, and then all the uh, the Fed money that came to all the banks and everything so, so to give them reserves. So you, what you're talking about is being too big to fail. Exactly. It, it, like in the in, in the old days with old fashioned capitalism where where there was there was no real there was no well there wasn't supposed to be real monopolies. It was about competition. If you failed, that's the way the crab cake crumbles, man, you failed. And somebody else, a smaller company, took your place. Well, I'm sure there are plenty of emerging, growing small banks. That would be more than happy to take the place Some of the big ones. Of the big ones that yeah. fail. Yeah. And that goes for any industry. Exactly. Exactly. You know, there's plenty of quality companies, smaller companies, to take your place. And uh, after my presidency is over, those institutions will give me huge speaking fees. Oh. Just like the Clintons. What is he gonna? What is he gonna say to to uh, to justify the high speaking fee? What, is, what on earth is he gonna say? For well, obviously they don't say anything. They just get them. They, for showing up. Yeah. So what is he gonna do? He's gonna he's gonna pucker his cheeks and go like this for forty minutes. 
400,000. Oh, yeah, you look great. Well, he's going. He's going to do what he did uh, uh, after they voted uh, to get rid of Obamacare. He's going to say, where is it? Where is that genius Paul Ryan? What a genius he is. Where is he? Where is he? And is he? he's behind them smiling from ear to ear. Where's that genius Paul Ryan? Well, Obama won't say that. No, not Obama. Well, we're talking about Obama. Yeah, you know. We're no, talking I'm, about Obama. Obama used the same playbook as Clinton did. Yeah, oh yeah. No, I was talking about yeah. I meant if 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 Trump expected to do the same thing. No. Well, he not will. Obama. He will. Obama. Yeah. Obama is high highly intelligent. Uh um what is he um he was a professor of constitutional law at one yeah. time, right? But he fooled the people too. He's That's a, my point. He's a corporatist, yeah. Yes, exactly. And it worked. Obama became president. And after his presidency ended, Obama was given two speeches for $400,000 each. Money. He could never have gotten if he helped working Americans. Hey, even even the, uh, the former, uh, I believe it was Harvard, the former Harvard professor, uh, uh, old gooseneck herself, Elizabeth Warren, sold out for the big mamu when she immediately endorsed Hillary Clinton. So, Obama was definitely not going to be saintlier than Clinton's because he also wanted the big bucks. Trump did not win because of Russian interference or because of the actions of FBI Director James Comey, he won because many Americans have been repulsed by the new Democratic Party, and particularly by the actions of Bill and Hillary and Barack Obama. And let us not forget the DNC with Deborah Wasser Kant Schitz. Let's not forget the DNC. Um, That's the real reason why we now have President Donald Trump. Oh, that's right. Okay. For you people that are watching from the organization Resist and Regenerate, mm -hmm. if you're wondering what this thing is, it is a, a, a good luck Blackthorn Shillelagh importer from Ireland. If you happen to be wondering, what the hell am I waving around? President Donald Trump signed an executive order on Thursday to set up a commission to study his unproven allegations of voter fraud in last year's presidential election. I thought I thought James Comey was uh, targeting Russia's involvement in the 2016. They were, because election. there is no such thing as voter fraud. I mean, for real, or are you just saying for that? real? Let's stop and figure it out for a moment. So, yeah. You go. You turn 18. You go to your local election board. If you get an ID. Right, you get an ID. You get signed in the book. Okay, so now you're in the book. In the book. Your first uh, election comes up that you want to vote in. If you show up. You take your ID card, you go to your place where you show up. Then you have to sign something. Sign, I think uh, you got to sign three things. You got to sign the book under your last signature. And there's like a slip, the ticket they give you. And then the ticket when you go inside. That's when you go in the booth. Go in the booth. So, okay, Mr. James Madonna or whoever or, came in. Or Joe Palooka. Joe Palooka, he voted. He's done. And he's on record. Now, voting. Yeah. four o'clock comes. Another Joe Palooka comes in. Oh, gee. Shows his ID. Open the book. Wait a second, you were here at 2 o'clock. You already signed it. You already signed it. What? So how do you get voter fraud? Then, now you have to prove that you're the real Joe Palooka. Yeah. So how do you get voter fraud? You know what I'm saying? 
So what you're trying, what you're saying to me, Doctor Bill, is that if you show up, and unfortunately, way too many Americans do not show up to vote, uh -huh. and 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 less are showing up than ever before. Yeah. But those that have shown up, it's on record <coughs> whether you vote that you or voted. not. Yes. So, uh, what about the um, the so-called uh, George uh, Soros uh, manufactured voting booths that flip ah. as you're pushing the button for one guy or gal, and it flips to somebody else? What about the old flippo? Well, they had electronic. trouble with all those machines a few years ago. Yeah, Arizona had trouble. All of them. All the companies that made those machines. There was a way to hack them, and they uh, gave you the wrong uh, totals, etc. Yeah. I and mean, then, and as that one, I believe it was in Kansas or Iowa. You once the votes are counted, they I mean counted up. You as a citizen, you count the votes. You count the votes. The people in charge of the council in the county or whatever it was, wanted the people who counted the votes to change the total because the total was against them. Yeah, but isn't that how it goes? Yeah, well that's voter fraud, all right? Yeah, well look, at uh, gerrymandering is, is a way of cheating too. That too, that too. Voter ID, uh, uh, charging Charging minor but, minority for for to pay a fee for a voter ID. Right, but in the end, <laughs> when when Republicans speak about voter fraud and etc., what they are trying to do is get rid of Democratic votes. Oh yeah, that's because, all it is. Because the lower the lower income, the lower on the income totem pole you happen to be. The most, the more likely you are to vote Democrat, or 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 liberal, independent, progressive. So, the less likely you are to vote Republican. Right. The richer you are, the more likely you are right. to vote Republican, right. because you're just a stingy, greedy son of a bitch. Right. So just get rid of those Democratic votes. Right. And the Republicans take over. Now, as far as Hillary Clinton goes, there's just something about the South. Um, southern blacks, they just like that Slick Willie, and they and if it wasn't for Slick Willie, Hillary wouldn't have gotten yeah. their votes. So that's why she got the Southern states. You know, I mean, they they it, 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 they rather vote for uh, the wife of uh, 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 Bill Clinton from Little Rock, Arkansas, than vote for a Jewish guy from Brooklyn, New York. Yeah. Who lives up in Vermont. Yeah. Even though the guy, the little Jewish guy from Brooklyn, New York, he's the one that marched with Dr. Martin Luther King and, yeah. Ma and Malcolm X and all the, all the rest of them. And he's the one that's going to help you in the end. He's the one that is going to help minorities more than anyone else. Right. Not the big banks, not, not the big corporations, not the big rich. Yeah, because Hillary Clinton didn't want uh, free public education, free public college for all. She was against that. Yeah. She was against the, uh, well, she kept on flip-flopping, flip but she was pretty much against single-payer universal health care. Yes. Right? Until she saw the crowds at Mr. Uh, 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 Sanders? Uh, Sanders uh, meetings and rallies, yes. Oh, her, oh, his rallies were, you could see... And she was all for... You could see uh, people for miles and miles and miles. Yeah. But, but any time Hillary had a rally, he, not too many people showed up. No, the chairs were empty. You know, and as far as uh, um, Jill Stein and the Green Party goes, there's something about Jill Stein that turned... It must have turned Bernie Sanders off. I mean, I watched some live stream... Uh, videos of Jill Stein rallies in 2016, and they they looked like throwbacks to Woodstock. They looked like a bunch of hipsters. 
was a big turnoff. Mm -hmm. And and look, even though I I liked a lot of the things she said on the Jesse Ventura show, she has this annoying saccharine sweet smile that never goes away. You know, like a car dealer. Yeah. It never disappears. She never gets angry and mad like Bernie Sanders does. She's always smiling. I. That, it, to me, that's a red flag. It didn't I'm work, sorry. okay? That's, that's a red all flag. we know. That's a red flag. Well, no, she, she fails every time she runs. Mm, wow. Yeah. Well, first of all, the independents are not invited to the debates. And, of course, it, it is the Green Party, okay? So yeah, well, if the Green Party was invited... It's not going to get the vote. If Jill Stein was invited to the debates, like... Uh, like all the Democrats were at the debates for the Democrat debate. Yeah. And the Republicans. You know, at least one independent should be at the debate. Everyone should be heard. Yes. Everyone. <laughs> I will finish this. And then we'll go to lunch. Oh, it's a kind of long. Is there a short one before lunch? Oh, no, no, because Maybe. I started this one already. Oh, no, no, finish it, finish it. The commission will be chaired by Vice President Mike Pence, who will be joined up by 15 other members appointed by the President. Kansas Secretary of State Chris Kobach, who Kobach. has advocated for some of the most restrictive voting laws, will serve as the commission's vice chair. Oh, yeah, of course, of course, the people who, who don't vote Republican will be restricted, but, you know. The commission will review policies, practices that enhance or undermine the American people's confidence in the integrity of federal elections, huh. including improper registrations, improper voting, fraudulent registrations, fraudulent voting, and voting suppression. Well, they're very, Republicans are very concerned about illegal a uh, aliens voting, illegal immigrants voting. Yeah, that too. So how do you do that when to get your ID to become a voter, you probably have to show a birth certificate or some other six-point ID crap Okay? Yeah, like you do a motor vehicles, right? Yeah, motor vehicles. Don't get me on motor vehicles! Because I'm pissed. Hey, I'm pissed that they had to drag my 85-year-old mother in. Right. They had to see her in person. Right. In person in order for her to validate that she is who she is. Right. And, I, and you know what security told me? That they seen people wheeled in on gurneys gurneys hospital gurneys wheelchairs because they don't trust anybody you got to you got to be there in the flesh shame on you division of motor vehicles and and the, our whole system today shame on you you're in the chiseless hall of shame that a person who is sick and bedridden should be wheeled in on a gurney just to prove that they are a real person yeah. to either... Well, they've to already done that like four years ago, you know, in their last visit when to, they were there and got yeah. the picture taken. Well, this was my mother you know? was, was Bullshit. relinquishing her driver's license. Ah. But she couldn't just relinquish it. She had to be dragged in there. She had to be there. Yeah. All right, hold on. All right, go ahead. Trump, who lost the popular vote to Hillary Clinton yeah, that, by nearly 2.9 million votes, gee, thank, thank you, Electoral College, has claimed that last year's election included up to 3 million to 5 million fraudulent voters. But there's no evidence for this. As voting rights advocates blasted the new executive order, federal and state election officials from both parties also disputed Trump's claims. 
They said there have been few incidents of people voting when they are not registered or voting by people who were not American citizens. Every election is going to have issues, but I don't think that three million to five million people voting illegally was one of those issues. The election officials have said they worry Trump's claims could shake the faith of voters, particularly at a time when the FBI and Congress are investigating whether Russia interfered in last year's presidential election. Trump stood by his claim. We'll see you after the committee, Trump told Time Magazine in March. Trump had originally been expected to sign the executive order creating the Voter Commission in late January, but it was delayed the Advisory Commission will hold public meetings, meet with federal, state, and local officials, as well as election experts. Voting rights advocates came out swinging against the new order. We hold grave concerns about this commission and the impact that it will likely have on minority communities. Michael Waldman, president of the Brennan Center for Justice at New York University School of Law, called the commission a sham and a distraction. All studies, including our own, have shown that voter fraud is rare. And the myth of voter fraud has been the justification for restrictive voting laws for years, serving to roll back access to our democracy for people all across the country. Yeah, what about Republicans cheating to, to uh, minimize votes against them, like we, we just talked about before? Voting rights advocates say the administration should focus on making access to the polls easier instead of unfounded claims of voter fraud. They argue some lawmakers are using the claim to ramp up more restrictive election law. That's it. That's it. Okay, we are going to break for lunch, people. And uh, you, will, you will now see the how to defeat a conservative Bible versus, followed by promo for Newsletter Censored, and we'll, we will be back with the balance of our show. All right. Hi, you son of a bitch. I got it. Bah, 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 bah. The balance of our show is fair and balanced. Yeah, so yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, we're fair and balanced. Bags, uh, right-wing Republicans are. That's fair and balanced for me. You damn tootin'. You damn tootin'.
Greetings. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co-host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. Newsletter Censored pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter Censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of Censored, Newsletter Censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like Newsletter Censored. So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. Greetings. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman, in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. Newsletter Censored pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter Censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of Censored, Newsletter Censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like Newsletter Censored. So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. Okay, we're back yeah. from, from an invigorating lunch. Well, like I was saying to the mm -hmm. Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman, we were talking about culinary th uh, subjects. Now, um, he likes, sometimes he makes salmon cakes, fish cakes. Now, if you make it in the style of the Maryland crab cake, uh, uh, it me. does not and it's also made by a company, I believe, out of North Carolina or somewhere down south called Phillips, Phillips Seafood. It is made, most of them are made without breadcrumbs. Mm -hmm. In other words, breadcrumbs are optional. Or whether you use panko, 
breadcrumbs or Italian season, it's really optional because on, on, a, on a container of Old Bay seasoning, a Maryland crab cake does not require breadcrumbs because you're using a raw egg, uh, some mayonnaise, uh, some Lee and Perrin's Worcestershire sauce, seasoning of your choice, and that's pretty much it for the recipe of a crab cake. So I am imagining that it is mostly the raw egg that holds the crab meat together. So I'm assuming the same thing will happen to a salmon cake. You know that, like yeah. if you want, if you want to eat a low carb salmon cake, you don't need breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs. You know, um, if you want to stretch out a can of salmon, then. Uh, you got to use panko, uh, I'd say panko, but you can't use the American panko because the American panko is not half soy and half whole wheat. Uh -huh. the, the imported one, the Japanese panko, is half soy and half whole wheat. But uh, I would just, you know, the price of canned salmon has been very reasonable lately, so I would just use an extra can of salmon and just, you know, go with the mayonnaise and the... Uh, and raw egg. So that's about it, really. That's mm -hmm. all I have to say. Uh, when, when when it rains like this, I I I uh, I'm in the mood for seafood. It has to do with the water coming down, and it's still coming down. Yeah, but no fish is coming down with it. <laughs> no. Ha <laughs> ha. No, no, not at all. Um. I was uh, Andrew Zimmer uh -uh. on Bizarre Foods on the Travel Channel was uh, was with uh, commercial uh, eelers, eel fishermen yeah. in the Netherlands, and you know I never had uh, uh, English style jellied eels before. I am very curious as to what they taste like. Mm -hmm. You don't think that you would like to try that? No. Jellied eels? No. The U.S. Postal Service, speaking of jelly deals, is hoping it can soon raise stamp prices by a penny or more. Well, it's certainly not going to go down. The Postal Service on Wednesday reported a quarterly loss of $562 million. Really? Because their parcel prices are very reasonable. Dr. Bill? The loss is because of the Republicans. Uh, what? Like they are making them pay their pension stuff in advance. Somewhere around six billion dollars a year. So they want to they wanna hurt right. everything that is not privatized. Right! Bingo! If it's not privatized, they want to hurt it. Cripple it! Cripple you it! You got it! Because they their 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 goal is to destroy everything that's government funded except the military industrial complex, and that they can rob from. They're just downright uh, underhanded, cr corrupt, evil entities. The uh, the conservative capitalist. Uh, you know what they would say? Well, well, at least we're not communists. Oh, what's what's wrong with well, <laughs> socialism? I see nothing wrong in, with socialism. If if you read the definition of socialism, I see nothing wrong with it. The loss was despite growth in package delivery. Yeah, well, you know, two-day priority is only like six dollars and forty some odd cents. Due to, to you know continued erosion in the use of first-class mail as well as expensive mandates for its retiree health care obligations. See, that's the six billion. It also attributed losses to a forced reduction in stamp prices last year. Forced reduction? Yeah, the prices went down two cents. Remember? Yeah. I mean... 49 well, well, cents stamps were so 47. Yeah. Uh, oh, by the way, international sh uh, shipping the DH uh, 
L. DHL. DHL is the king, without a doubt. I know people who, have, who live in other countries who have businesses, and they use a DHL. It is, it is very reliable, it is fast, it is reasonably priced. DHL for, for shipping long distance. <laughs> the Postal Service is generally barred under federal law from raising prices more than the rate of inflation. But it is seeking greater regulatory leeway to increase prices, including a one cent rate hike provided in a measure being considered by the Congress. The current cost of a first class stamp is 49 cents. That's true. America deserves a financially stable postal service that can continue to play a vital role in our economy and society, said the Postmaster General, Megan J. Brennan. She said the Postal Service continues to cut costs aggressively. Sometimes you just have to go with and stay with big government. Sometimes in some areas big government does do it best. Not the, always, but sometimes, the, some areas. The financial report shows what it described as controllable income of more than $12 million for the three months that ended March the 31st. But when taking into account expenses to pre-fund retiree health care and other items considered beyond the management's control, it posted a loss. Operating revenue came to $17.3 billion, a decrease of $474 million from the same time last year. The Postal Service continued to match double-digit growth in its package business, boosted by the strength of Amazon and other internet retailers. But that wasn't enough to offset losses in both first class mail and marketing mail, also known as the junk mail, which make up the bulk of revenue. The Postal Service is urging relief from the mandate to pre-fund retiree health benefits. Legislation in 2006 required the Postal Service to fund 75 years worth of retiree health benefits, something that neither the government nor private companies are required to do. Interesting. How the hell do you uh, fund re uh, retiree health pensions, whatever, when they ain't even there yet. The people are not even hired yet. That's what the Republicans did. Okay, it's all a fantasy. Hey, did you get that, did you get that political uh, banner from me of, uh, of Paul Ryan dressed up like a leprechaun saying that uh, uh, the, them poor people on Medicaid or after me pot of gold. Oh, I saw that, yes. Yeah, that was that cracked me up for some reason. Legislation passed by a House <laughs> committee this year would relieve the Postal Service of much of the expensive pre-funding requirements and allow a one cent increase in the price of a first class stamp. The Postal Regulatory Commission is also reviewing whether to offer more leeway to raise stamp prices, a move opposed by many trade groups. First class mail volume is down as people rely more on email for online bill payments. The number of first class and marketing mail items delivered during the last quarter 
was 34 billion pieces, a 4% decrease. The financial numbers release Wednesday bring the Postal Service's year-to-date earnings to $900 million. Better than the $1.7 billion loss for the same period last year. Largely due to reduced expenses for the health care pre-funding. The Postal Service has lost money for 10 years in a row. It says the continuing red ink hurts consumers because it can't make necessary investments to ensure prompt, efficient, and reliable postal services, such as by updating delivery trucks and equipment. Yeah, they were tired supposed to go electric due to public resistance. It dropped a previous proposal to cut costs by eliminating Saturday mail delivery. No, we still get it. I know. It, it, it was, uh, it was uh, thought of defeated. defeated yeah. Today's financial report shows the underlying business strength of the U.S. Postal Service while also indicating the need to address external matters beyond the United States Postal Service control. Uh, just toss it. I had to see just, what was on the other day. Just stick it. Oh, you know, <laughs> um, is it true that Sarah Palin uh, one time this year referred to um, uh, Barack Obama as uh, as as uh, shucking and jiving. She used the word shucking and jiving. I heard Colin Powell was uh, 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 general retired General Colin Powell was not happy about shucking and jiving. Her saying that about Barack Obama. Well, it, yeah. it is kind of racist. It is. It well, is what? racist. Of course, it's racist. Chuck it and drive. That's what the Republicans do. What about uh, Perry? Uh, oh, that dummy? Niggerhead. Remember Niggerhead? <laughs> no, no. Niggerhead. That was the name of the place where they went oh. pheasant shooting with all their big white buddies. Oh, well, all the. Uh, you mean you're talking about the Texas elitists? Yeah. That all sound like Foghorn Leghorn. Yeah, uh, a former governor, former uh, idiot governor, governor of Texas, Rick Perry. They went pheasant hunting, and that's what they call the place. The place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they used to back in the day. They used to call Brazil nuts nigger toes. Let's face it. Yeah. Although feeling wild birds, feeding wild birds, is an enjoyable pastime. It has its downsides. Yeah, because idiots feed them the wrong things. From relentless squirrels to gluttonous jays. I like jays. Come on. Lay off the blue jays. For me, the worst aspect of feeders is birds inadvertently flying into my dining room window. Hey, you know what I hated about my bird feeder the most? I'm trying to attract the beautiful songbirds and I'm getting all these grayish, brownish, dirty, dingy looking miscellaneous birds hogging the food and spilling more on the ground than in the feeder. You know, birds are messy. Alright, go ahead. These window strikes are typically caused by birds trying to escape the attack of a hungry, sharp shinned or Cooper's hawk. You know what, my friend, my good friend Ken Thiessen, who uh, they they rescued a baby blue jay and 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 it adopt it became part of the family. Yes, it became very domesticated. Uh, uh, named, they named it Gracie. You know, 
Gracie is on her uh, um, second uh, set of, uh, of of babies. Oh. So far, her second set, her second season of babies, and they have a, a, a huge problem down in Boca Raton, Florida, with uh, the Cooper's Hawks. Uh, and and what, what's been happening is sometimes the Blue Jays attack the Cooper's Hawk uh, as a combined effort. Uh, you know, like a, like they, they get together and they just peck the hell out of the Cooper's Hawks. But the Cooper's Hawks are definitely a big problem. In their panic, the birds don't see the pane of glass and fly smack into it. Hawks that chase birds from feeders fly into windows as well. Yeah, and feral cats, I mean cats in general also are, are enemies of uh, wild birds. Over the years my wife and I have tried several ways to reduce the bird strikes. From simply not washing our windows as often to sticking faint plastic silhouettes on the outsides of the panes so they don't appear clear anymore. Well they sell decals. Yeah. They sell decals, sure. But as we found out, dirty windows and decals don't quite cut it. They still crash into the... An incident last fall made us take drastic action. One sunny September afternoon, we heard a sickening thunk at our dining room window. We hurried outside to find a female, Red Start, lying motionless on our deck. Got hurt? Dead or alive? We weren't sure. So rather than move the bird or seek help too hastily, we sat nearby for several <laughs> minutes of protected from possible predators. Maybe it was in shock of some kind? Yeah, probably. Slowly, the delicate warbler regained her senses. After a while, she flew off, much to our relief. Then, and there, we realized we needed to do something more about the safeguarding of our windows. And what did you do, though? One expert recommended moving the feeders closer to the house so that the birds would be more aware of the huge obstruction our house blocking their escape route. But I know from experience that feeders near homes and decks usually mean a free buffet for every squirrel in our zip code. Yeah, you have to you have to squirrel proof your bird feeder. I mean, they do sell they do sell um, devices that you can wrap around a tree trunk, you know, and they, it claims to be squirrel and cat proof. I just the cheapest way is just to get by barbed wire and wrap it around the tree several times, you know. <clears throat> Since January, we've been using something called a copy on bird savers. The hell is that? Which Hawk Mountain Sanctuary in Pennsylvania and the Shinnecock National Wildlife Refuge in Virginia have installed to reduce the window strikes. The design could not be simpler. Strands of 0 0.125 inch in diameter olive drab parachute cord 4.25 inches apart hung vertically from a cord across the top of the window frame and attached with velcro or hooks. Sounds like a pain in the ass to, to install that. But. Our copying's website has instructions for do-it-yourselfers. And the small Pennsylvania company also sells the finished product. You know what? I don't like sliding glass uh, doors in the back of a house because I like more privacy. 
I don't like all that sunlight coming in, bother hurting my eyes. I don't like all no. I don't like any nosy people seeing what I'm doing. So I am not in favor of sliding glass doors. How do you reduce the number of birds flying into your windows? Please share your ideas with me at features at NorthJersey.com. All right. Cool, man. Coolie, cool. We, we, we're animal lovers here at Progressive Discussions and Newsletter Censored, that's for sure. Animal rights activists. And speaking of animals, we have another one. This probably should be the last one, no? I don't know. It's, uh, it's, um, was it 25? No, that 20? clock is wrong. That clock is that wrong? That clock needs an AA. Oh, so we're closer to, we're closer to 4 p.m. than... It's seven minutes after 4. Already? All oh, right. then that should be the last one. <laughs> oh, that, yeah, that needs an AA. If you want, I'll put it in. When we're through here, you can put it in. Fine. <laughs> on the 60 Minutes television program on Sunday, interviewer Leslie Stahl related to Donald Trump reports of his supporters attacking minorities, she said, they are harassing Latinos and Muslims. Trump said this was news to him, and he was saddened by it. He was saddened by it? Yeah. Oh, I mean, real sadness? Or? Yeah. Okay, okay. Stahl asked him if he wanted to say anything to these people. Trump stared directly into the camera and said, Don't do it! That's terrible! Because I'm going to bring this country together. Oh really? You you you're taking you're taking health care away from twenty three or twenty four, whatever the hell the amount is, million Americans, and uh, you want to bring this country together by hurting low income people. Oh gee, that's a real great way to bring this country together. On the heels of that statement. He has just appointed Stephen Banyan, an alleged white supremacist, supremacist, supremacist. supremacist Sist. as his chief strategist and senior counselor. So, so this guy's going to bring help bring America together. I ask, how can we even begin to give Trump a chance to bring this country together? This is truly. A season of disgust. Not to mention the administration being the largest insane asylum and and um, a gang of thugs that uh, the, the, this nation has ever seen. <laughs> well, that's it. We're done for this week's progressive discussions. I I apologize for the rain making all that racket, but. As the you know the uh, the the Empress of the uh, planet Vulcan said on Star Trek, Zaveda is Zaveda. What I can be done? done. Yeah, she had a, 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 a Jewish Jewish, Jewish accent. accent. Yeah. De Pau was her name. De Pau. Right? Is that right, old man Leonard Nimoy? Oh, by the way, now that you pointed to those. Yes. Tonight on. Uh, Optimum Channel 33. Three-dimensional chessboards. No. On Svenguli at 10 o'clock. Okay. Is gargoyles. Oh, the oh, I saw that. Actually, they made more than one gargoyle horror movie. Cool. Well, actually, gargoyles are like sentinels. They're 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 statues that are all over Gothic cathedrals. Yeah. Not Winchester Cathedral. That was the song. But anyway, don't start singing, please.
I don't know the words. Anyway, that's it. We're done. All right? <clears throat> Have a safe week. We'll see you. Yeah. Don't go into standing water with your car. Okay? With the car? With your car. Don't yeah. allow don't allow standing water anywhere around your home. Well, that too. The old, the old lady that lives upstairs, Margaret, she had a tall uh, kitchen uh, garbage can that she had left in the backyard and, and it was filled to the top with putrid standing water. You know what that means? Mosquitoes. Lots of mosquitoes. Yeah. Mosquitoes. Yeah. Not just West Nile virus, but now Zika virus. Now you got Zika, which is worse than the West Nile. Yeah. Unbelievable. I dumped it over. It was I was felt like throwing up from the stench. Yeah, my God. You don't do that. All right, listen, we'll see you. We're gonna see you. We're gonna see it. You gotta like the way you I know my voice is raspy. You gotta like the way you look. I guarantee you. Uh -huh. Hey, they fired that guy. I felt bad. Uh -huh. Just like they fired the original Dos Equis man. That's right. They're he, trying to save money. He had a lot of class, man. He was classy. But maybe he wanted he wanted more and more money, yeah. so they got they got a replacement. That's what happened. The guy with the schnoz over, the younger guy. That's what happened. You know, but getting back to um my voice. It is only like this because of the crazy weather we're having. I do not normally have a a raspy voice for you newcomers to the show you you new viewers say so long to these people so long people